Hello everyone. Before we get started, I just want to say a thank you to Skillshare again for sponsoring this video. I'm going to talk about them a little bit further into the video, but today's video is going to be all about DIYs. I don't really do DIYs that often. Like the furthest I've ever gone is cropping my t-shirts. So, you know, I'm not that skilled, but hopefully that means all of the DIYs that I'm going to do, they're going to be simple enough for you guys to try them as well, because right now we definitely all have a lot of time that we need to fill. So, Today is the day. I've got about five ideas in mind that I've seen on like TikTok and also just on YouTube. So yeah, I hope this gives you some ideas for yourself and let's get into the first DIY. So for my first DIY, I'm living out my visco girl dreams and making loads of scrunchies. And here are all of the materials that you're gonna need. Some fabric, which personally I collected from t-shirts that I've cropped, depending on what type of scrunchie you want to make. I think slightly thicker material is easier to work with. Next is hair bands, and I bought a huge pack of these because I know I'm gonna want to make loads of scrunchies. Some thread, which is preferably the color of the material that you're gonna use. A needle and a pair of scissors, preferably fabric ones just so it's a bit easier. So here I'm just cutting my fabric at the seams so that I can lay it flat so it's easier for me to measure with my tape measure. Now, depending on how big or small you want your scrunchies, you might want to do different measurements to me, but for reference, I did mine 45 centimeters in length and 10 centimeters in width, and in inches, that's about 18 by four. And as you can see here, I'm just using a white pencil to mark out the lengths so it's easier for me to cut. It definitely would have been better if I had chalk or something, but I don't, so I just use what I had. And don't worry if the lines aren't perfectly straight or you haven't cut it very neatly because it doesn't really matter in the end because the sewing's gonna hide it. You'll see in a second. Next, you're gonna want to wrap your fabric around something. I used a bottle. You don't have to do this. Um, I just found it way easier in the end. And when you're doing this, make sure to put the side of the fabric that you want to show on the outside. Then you wanna put your hairband over the bottle and into the middle of the fabric like I just showed. And we're gonna start sewing. So this is where I actually use Skillshare to help me out. I've worked with them before, so you guys know I already love them. But if you don't know who they are, they are an online learning community. Millions of people come to take part in classes and online lessons. There are classes in illustration, photography, film and video editing, literally so many things. But today I used a class by Angie Schneider, which is called Basic basic hand stitches everyone should learn. It was a really simple class and really easy to kind of follow along with it. So Angie definitely helped me there, taught me how to do a running stitch. If you are a member of Skillshare, then you get access to all of the classes. And if you wanna try it out for yourself, then there's gonna be a link in my description for two free months of premium Skillshare. And that is for the first 1,000 of you to click the link. And then after the two months free trial, it actually costs less than $10 a month for an annual subscription. So yeah, if you want to delve into your creative side then definitely check out the link in my description as you can see i'm just sewing the edges together trying to keep the line of my thread kind of close to the edges but not right at the edge you don't actually have to sew like this you could use a sewing machine if you have one i don't you could also use a glue gun if you have one but yeah i did sewing that's my tried and tested method it just takes kind of a really long time now we're gonna flip the scrunchie inside out so when you're sewing it make sure that you leave about an inch of space at the end of your sewing that is free because that will just make it way easier for you to flip it inside out as you can kind of see here i didn't sew right to the edge of the fabric <laughs> Next, you're gonna want to put one of the ends inside the other end so that it looks seamless. And I folded over the edges of the top piece so that there weren't any exposed edges. And then you just sew that up and try to hide the little knot that you make to secure the thread. I really love how this turned out. 
not gonna lie my first one definitely wasn't perfect but the more that i made i got the hang of it and they started to look way better so i ended up making loads more in different colors and yeah i love them my next diy is customized tote bags this is definitely the easiest diy and all you're gonna need is some paints preferably fabric ones because I don't know if it will work otherwise. Also a pen, I got a textile pen because I don't think a felt tip pen would be very long lasting. You'll also need some tape. I've got some painters tape here, some paint brushes. And of course a tote bag. So what you're going to want to do first is get a piece of cardboard and put it inside the bag so that when you paint, the two sides don't stick together. Next, you're going to take your tape and make a square or a rectangle. I mean, whatever shape you want to make, really. You could even do a circle or a heart if you're more talented than I am with tape. Then I just got my paints and you're gonna actually want quite a lot of it. So, you know, don't be shy, put some more. Now I got inspiration for this from a girl called Molly Santos, I think. I'll put her name on the screen cause I'm not too sure, but she's an incredible artist on TikTok. And I just love the stuff that she does with tote bags. So I wanted to make my own. Basically what she does is paints lots of shapes in different shades of the same color. And then once it's dry, you can draw something over the top. I don't think what I did here was that great, but I'm hoping the more that I do, the better I will get. But yeah, next you just need to peel away the tape, which is super satisfying. Then I just found an inspiration picture on Pinterest and got my textile pen and started drawing. And here's how it turned out. I definitely think it looks better than I thought it would. Plus it definitely has like a summery vibe and it's actually practical. DIY number three is definitely one of my favorites, but it is the one that takes the longest time and that is tie dyeing. So of course you're gonna want some clothes. Now I used a combination of old clothes, but also I bought myself a new white jumper because I didn't have one and I wanted to make a matching set. So I also bought myself a tie dye kit, which I kind of regret doing because it was quite expensive for the amount of stuff that you get, but it was just really easy to follow the instructions that it gave me. Like here, it told me to soak my clothes in soda ash. When I had run out of soda ash, I did try it without it and it was fine without it. So I really don't think it was necessary. After the 25 minutes of soaking my clothes, I wrung them out so that they were kind of just damp. You do need your clothes to be a little bit wet, not soaking, but damp. And that way the dye will kind of disperse easier. I started with my old socks because I wanted to kind of get the hang of it before I went onto my big jumper. The good thing about tie dye is that it can never really look bad unless you mix colors like purple and orange, which will probably turn to brown and not a nice brown. So, so yeah, just be careful with which colors you choose. Here, I was just using the one called crimson in my set. So what I was picturing was a nice pink color at the end of the whole process. Then the next day I got them out of the bag and put them in my bath to rinse them off. You have to keep rinsing and scrunching them until all of the water runs clear. And then once you're done with rinsing all of the dye out, you need to put the clothes on a cold wash in your washing machine with nothing else. So this is how they turned out and I definitely wanted them to be a pale pink at the start but I think I had the wrong dye for that. But turns out I actually prefer this. I haven't seen anyone with a set like this before and I think the jumper and my joggers look so cute together. 
I also made a couple tops and some tote bags as well, which I'm pretty sure I'm gonna sell. So, you know, keep an eye out for that. This next DIY was literally just about making some jeans a little bit more interesting. I found this pair in a charity shop and they are way too big for me at the waist, so I will have to get them taken in after lockdown. But for now, we're gonna make them look really funky. I actually got this idea from my friend Jemima. I really love her style. And once I asked her where she got her jeans from, because they had this really cool pattern at the cuff and she told me she made them herself. So I was like, you know what? Let me try. So I found this old dress of my mum's from, I don't know, the 80s. And it's like a size four. So, you know, definitely can't fit into it myself. So I thought, let's cut it up. <laughs> and it's so simple. All you have to do is make sure that the material actually fits around the cuff of your jeans and then just sew it on. It did take me a while. So as you can see, I was also watching some Netflix at the same time, but the final result was really cool. So this is what they look like and I really love them, especially because literally no one else is gonna have a pair of jeans like this. I also think you could do the same to the pockets of your jeans or maybe do patches on them, literally whatever you want. Last but not least is bleach dyeing your clothes. Let's pretend that I didn't lose the footage of my plain black joggers and also the part where I covered it all in bleach. <laughs> Let's just move straight on to the part where I tied it up with elastic bands, just like I did with the tie dyeing. And here I'm just putting on a diluted solution of bleach, which I kind of just guessed. And then I just went in again with the straight bleach and just put it everywhere. Now this one's actually a little bit dangerous, so please, be careful with bleach. Bleach can really hurt your skin, so make sure you wear super thick rubber gloves and be in a really well ventilated area. And this is what they look like in the end. Yeah, they, they look really cool. And I also did this to an old t-shirt and then cut it up and made it into a scrunchie to match. those were all of my DIYs that I did this week. Not gonna lie, this has been like the most fun that I've had during lockdown. So yeah, if you're bored, definitely try this. Obviously you have to buy all of the materials unless you've already got them. But a good thing is I've made so many things. Like, let me show you the scrunchies. I've made like 20 scrunchies and I've still got loads of material left. So I wanna make loads more, plus a lot of the tie-dye stuff that I've made. And then I think I'm gonna sell them on either Depop or maybe I'll make an Etsy or something like that. If you want to buy any of this stuff from me, then just follow my Instagram because I will update on there like where I'm gonna sell it. So yeah, you can even make a little bit of money by doing all of this stuff as well, if you wanted. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and you got some ideas for yourself to do during lockdown. I'm gonna go sew some more scrunchies. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one.